Okay. We had that movie that. Uh, yeah. So Ron, you you were just saying that your father was here during the Welsh revival. Where we lived, <clears throat> uh, and we were born about twelve miles from here. It's a place that's beside a place called Neath. Okay. And uh, yes, my dad lived through the uh, the Welsh revival, and he was a great source of um, stories about the revival for, for me, which were very interesting. You know. So you grew, like you would have grown up grown up listening oh, yes. to the stories. Yes, quite, quite, yes. Wow. And, uh, and of course, being so near to uh, in Bar, where we are now, uh, and near the college, and all that was happening here something we were aware of all the time. For instance, Haile Selassie, the emperor of uh, Ethiopia, did you know that, came here, Reese Howells, uh, at a particular time in uh, the uh, history of Ethiopia, things were going badly out there. Yes, I and read that in the book. Yes. Him. And the amazing thing was, you know, people would say, hey, you got on the bus locally today. <laughs> Haile Selassie was on the bus. This is how we travelled around. And ever since, of course, uh, his family has been coming, uh, his grandchildren have been coming to the grammar school here, which is attached to the, uh, to the college here, you know. Yeah. But um, the story I was uh, uh, relating earlier is found um, in a book by R.B. Jones, um, and it's called Rent Heavens. It's just a slender book that I it it might be out of print. I don't know, but you might be able to get it in Amazon, you know, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah, and um, there are numerous books on the revival, but it is he who relates the story of this young people's group. Um, I'm repeating myself now. Is it okay? Yes. Um, that were meeting, yeah, young people meeting uh, for fellowship and for prayer. And as Anne says, they were members of an organisation which Anne has worked for, Christian Endeavour. And uh, one evening, this very young girl, only 14 years of age, had never spoken in public before. You know, we all have friends like that in prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. They're lovely people, but they just uh, never you know, prayed openly in public. And um, she was, the story goes, just drawn to her feet. And she was heard to say, in Welsh, of course, because of the, the, the language of the revival in Wales was Welsh, you know, it's a very, and Lacha and all those areas were very Welsh-speaking uh, areas. She was heard to say, a roiv and carry, yes, he grist and hoch gallon. I love Jesus in English <laughs> with all my heart. And apparently, the, the Spirit just fell on that, that group. It's and it was, <laughs> um, the, you know, Abby Jones feels that this was the prelude. Uh, to the revival. I mean, Evan Roberts was the figurehead. He did uh, the preaching and the travelling and so on. But um, that's where it, it began. Oh. And I was saying earlier, um, it's amazing when you read the history of revivals, it's the young people. In the Hebrides revival, it's a group of young men. That, that was the beginning of the revival in the Hebrides, you see. Mm -hmm. And the Moravians. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, sorry? The Moravians? Yeah, well, it's, it, it, it's incredible when you, you know, the more you go into it, uh, this is how it is. And I was telling Rick here the other morning when we were having breakfast uh, that, um, um, you know, the, the, the first disciples we think of them as old oh, men, you know, Peter, <laughs> and say, they were young men. It's you true. Know? And, Isaac Watts, who wrote that lovely hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, mm. on which, in, the, in our hymn books it says, on which the Prince of Glory died. But the original text of that hymn is, I Survey the Wondrous Cross, on which the young Prince oh. of Glory died. So, I mean, Jesus himself was a comparatively young man, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He died. 
So it's interesting to find young people at the root of uh, mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. movements. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were chatting about this morning. Sometimes young people need a lot of counselling because <laughs> uh, youth being youth, you mm -hmm. know, they can make an act precipitately, can't they, you know? And, uh, you know but they're people with, that make commitments, you see. And, uh, That's what it is. Um, yeah, so it's, that's so, a little story of the revival. But my dad, you know, he, his stories of the revival, um, he was a miner, you see, and w when the revival came, um, amazing things happened, you know, miners going to work, not Christian, you know, no attachment to the church at all, walking to, to the mines early hours of the morning, and just falling on mm. their knees in repentance. Um, shops locally that were owed a lot of money because things were tough and hard in those days and people were managing to get things but not paying for them. Suddenly there, there was a reformation as well as a revival because people were now wanting to pay their debts. Mm. And underground, of course, the ponies, they couldn't get the, all the ponies uh, drag the drums along with the coal. They couldn't get the ponies to move because they were so used to miners cursing and swearing. Yes. <laughs> and of course there was none of that and they couldn't get the ponies going. <laughs> the other thing was, my dad was saying that everybody kept their, uh, every miner had his, um, his shovel, his pick, you know, his own tools locked locked always, you know, because <laughs> they walk. <laughs> mm. When the revival came, nobody locked it, nobody took your, your shovel or your tool or anything. So that's the sign of revival, is reformation, is the way the whole of life changes in, mm. in the community. And the day Evan Roberts came to my home church in the uh, Resolve and near me, just 12 miles from here, packed, church is packed, you know, outside of, and uh, my dad said he could see him, he said I can see him now, he had a, this, uh, must have been in the winter time, he had an overcoat on, and he just walked slowly into the church, went into the pulpit, and just looked around, they were waiting for a fantastic message, a sermon, he never preached, he just looked around the congregation and as he looked around people were just you know, falling and you know where they were in the pews and in knees and mm. crying and repenting and such so on. He never spoke that night. <laughs> My dad said, I can't tell you. I said, did you he said he never preached, you know. Same with my dad. <laughs> the, the morning war broke out in 1939. It was with my dad in church, he said. I, I look old, but I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 3rd of September 1939, I was with my dad in church. At 11 o'clock, the, um, the minister announced that war had been declared with, with German, you see. And... Um, Six years of age, I mean, it was like yesterday, it's amazing, you know, a child, what a child can, and I, I couldn't remember the, the message that morning, but my dad told me that, that lovely text, in quietness and confidence should be your strength. Mm. That was the, um, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so my dad, you know, he was, he then, be, he was the lay pastor of my home church in, uh, and, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, lovely man, great man, and. Uh